Bonjour, thank you. I uh, apologize, I'm going to speak in English. I'm not so trained like the colleague from Spain. Uh, so, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation, for being here today. It's a pleasure for me, for my organization, to share some knowledge and experience on this very relevant topic. Uh, I am in charge of the technical direction of the Italian Center for River Restoration, that is uh, a not-for-profit organization established in 1999, then, uh, as the name suggests, uh, promote uh, uh, sustainable management of river basin in Italy. But as you can see through, uh, with the, the logos in my first slide, we are somehow connected with the similar centers across Europe. And, uh, in France, we work together with the, uh, the French Agency for Biodiversity, former ONEMA, that is in charge of the uh, river restoration center in, uh, in your country. So, first of all, uh, I have uh, made a last minute change in the title of my presentation, as you can see, with the, the two green characters, because I feel that like this, all the people sitting in this room will, be, will feel more comfortable. Because, of course, we are talking about uh, uh, breaking the rivers, so river fragmentation, but also let's have a positive uh, look at these issues and uh, see, uh, and let's promote, let's poster some unbreaking uh, of the rivers. <coughs> so, someone told me that this, uh, uh, this uh, would have been a multidisciplinary conference, so I'm starting my presentation far, far away. Uh, I'm not uh, a uh, expert in uh, healthcare, but uh, all of you, all of us know what is uh, represented in this uh, painting, and uh, this is very re relevant for the, the theme of river fragmentation. Because, you know, this uh, issue, when happens in our human cardiovascular system, it's not uh, a very uh, so happy news because of the several consequences that are connected with this kind of disease that uh, uh, led a lot of people to suffer. And if we look at some figures at European scale, these are the numbers of people suffering because of uh, thrombosis within their body. About uh, 8 million people suffer for this, eventually coming to, to death. And if we look at which is the concern of, uh, our, of the European Commission on this issue, we see that about 1.3% of the gross domestic product of the European Commission is uh, given to prevent or to take care of this issue. So, I'm sure that you understand why I'm starting from, from this point. Because if we come to the rivers, one of the important questions is uh, are we able to put to river care the same efforts we are putting to health care? Are we aware of how much river, important rivers are in Europe, in our countries? for our health, but not for only for this. So if we look at this picture, we are not, all of us we are, are uh, recognizing our continent, right? But no border is painted in this, uh, in this uh, figure. Only the main rivers of Europe are represented in this, uh, uh, in this figure. And this is a measure of how much river are important, like the cardiovascular system for a human being, rivers are important for the, uh, for the health of, uh, of our continent. And we are aware, because this morning many speakers have uh, represented several uh, data of how many thromboses are, in, uh, are present in our uh, river network. More than one million of barriers, the, the Amber project is estimating, are present in our river network. So this is a, an healthcare issue, in my view. So coming to some figures more connected with the 
what we deal with in our daily activity. Here we have the representation of the ecological status of the European river given by the Environmental European Agency in 2012 according to the river basin plans that have been uh, done by the member states. And as you can see, most of the 50 per, more of the 50% of the European rivers are suffering, are not in a good condition. And if we look on the right side of the slide, we see with the orange columns that more of the 40% of rivers are suffering for hydromorphological pressures. So there is, a, uh, there is a concern about this. And if we look at the river basin management plans that have been done by the member states, we have a good news. Because 96% of the measures included in the plan of measures deals with hydromorphological pressures. And two-thirds of those measures deal specifically with barrier mitigation. So this is a matter of being aware of which is the point of uh, river alteration. But still we are missing something. A lot of barriers are still there. A lot of barriers are still planned and under construction in this very moment. So what is missing to be effective in uh, taking care of the, the body of our continent? So. This is the key issues. The Humber project is aware of this and is going to work on these issues for the next five years. But this is the least, uh, not comprehensive, but uh, a bit, uh, I mean, uh, relevant of the of most of the services that healthy river can provide to human beings, to river communities. I'm not going to read all, all of them. You are all aware of uh, how many things we are to have been able to do because of our rivers, and we can do still nowadays with our rivers. So, coming to a, a framework in which to consider the services that a river can provide connected with the, the, the health of rivers, and is a, I, I suggest you this, uh, this scheme. We have been talking the whole morning and part of the afternoon about the red and the green uh, boxes. We are, we are doing a lot of efforts in order to assess river fragmentation in terms of, of how many barriers, uh, what typology of barriers, but we are doing a lot of efforts also in trying to understand the cause-effect relationship between those barriers and river health. The news coming in the last years is the ecosystem services approaches. And if eventually we want to take care of our river, the key issue could be this one. To be aware, together with the ecological uh, uh, concern, uh, about how many ser services could be provided by uh, healthy rivers. In my presentation, I'm going to pass through those connections and try to contribute to, to the discussion. So, about these former two points, a lot of it has been said, uh, said this morning. I just want, would like to add this, uh, the information coming from this project. It is one of the projects that I've been working on, uh, on these issues. This is an FP7 project, Reform, that stands for Restoring Rivers for Effective Catchment Management. And as you can see, this deliverable provides us with uh, some uh, output about effects of pressures on hydromorphology, hydromorphology of rivers. And this scheme provides us a summary of what are the co connection uh, between hydromorphological pressures affecting rivers and hydromorphological processes and variables. And uh, the, this project has developed some cause effects conceptual model that are relevant for supporting us in considering river fragmentation together with the, all the ecosystem services that are connected with the, the same barriers but the other features of rivers. Please be aware that river fragmentation is one of the pressure that is uh, considered as the WFD uh, demand to the, uh, to the member states. 
Looking into this uh, issue, the, uh, the reform project has developed this uh, scheme, this conceptual model, in which all the connection between the pressures, the processes, and the variables are uh, explicitated. And as you can see, river fragmentation is not just a matter of uh, isolate, isolating some river stretches, as you can see in the right side of the, of the slide. But many other hydromorphological attributes are involved in this cause-effect chain, like flow, magnitude, or channel life, substrate size, and thermal issues. Many other conceptual models have been developed, and I'm just going to show you the whole picture of the most relevant one connected with river fragmentation. When we talk about large dam, of course, the scale of the pressures change, and we have to consider many other relations. But also, water management issues are connected. Most of the waves, most of the dams are linked with some water diversion happening in the river. And as you can see, many relations appear as well. And sometimes those relations are more relevant than the physical barrier itself. We can have some barriers along our rivers that are not so, uh, so, um, so uh, crushing the sediment transport or even the, the fish migration, but because of the water shortage, they can be relevant. The same project, the reform project, provides us with such a matrix. You can see in the rows the hydromorphological processes happening in, in the river, and in the columns the different pressure removal. The, the, the light blue box highlights the river fragmentation removal, that could be a river removal, and as you can see, we have some semi quantitative uh, uh, effects that are have been uh, uh, pointed out in this matrix. This not, doesn't solve the problem of being able of, uh, of uh, forecast, uh, foreseeing, forecasting the, the, the effects of waves along the river, but provide us with a map. This map can help us in governance processes, not in scientific uh, uh, studies. If we are aware of which are the connection and which is the magnitude of those connection, even if we are not able to evaluate them in a quantitative way, we are still able to take decisions, not waiting years before we come to the you know, scientific models, but starting from tomorrow, we are able to enter into a negotiated table and starting taking uh, decisions. You see a similar matrix for the hydromorphological variables. I'm not going to enter into the details, but such kind of tools is useful. Moreover, in those countries like Italy, in which the, the available tools are not so uh, widespread, not so uh, used by the decision maker on the, or the public authorities. The last part of the story is the are the biological variables. They have been considered into, into this project, in the reform project. But I'm going to show you another project that is a, a, an available tool this community has to, has to, to, to support in uh, dealing with river fragmentation. This, this is another FP7, FP6 sorry, project ended up in uh, 2012 that has, uh, has that with the uh, integrated system to assess ecological status and recovery. Basically, what I want to show you is this conceptual model that has been developed into that project. As you can see, this is the, the home page of the website of the project. Linking to, uh, clicking to results and then to conceptual model, you have those three uh, links available. And the third one is the conceptual model connected with the removal of waves and dams in low energy streams. And this conceptual model is made like this. On the left side, you see the action that is removing the wave. And in the middle part of the slide, you see the connection of this action to some state variables of the river in the upstream and downstream reaches. And in the right side of the slide, you see the 
consequences of those variable changes in connection with uh, uh, some attributes of the biological uh, variables. And each arrow represents a connection that has been, uh, that has been established in, uh, in, the, in the literature. I mean, there are some references, some papers uh, uh, that have demonstrated that that connection is existing. Each arrow is represent a number of papers, basically, that support that connection. And at that time, 2012, as you can see, 28 relevant papers has been used to build that connection. It's not a large number. There is still a lot of uh, uncertainty in this uh, cause-effect uh, relation. But we are not at the point zero. We are uh, working through this, uh, this issue. Coming to the second and last part of the, of the scheme, which is the connection between river health and ecosystem services. I'm going to show you just one slide about this. And this is the slide, again coming from the reform project. You see in the rows some different typology of rivers that uh, are classified by number of threats, so, uh, substrate typology and longitudinal slope. And in the columns you see the ecosystem services that has been uh, classified by the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. And uh, so this is the typical uh, classification system that is widespread, widespread in uh, many applications worldwide. And each cross, each light blue cross represents the connection between that ecosystem service and that type of rivers. And as you can see, all the river topology support between 11 and 17 different topology of ecosystem services. So it's not the point of being aware of this, it's the point that uh, the connection is existing and the challenge is to enter into this connection and case by case, river by river, uh, com river community by river community that is stakes the, uh, is to understand which are the, the specific ecosystem services that are involved. Coming to the last part, I'm going to show you not the whole story, but just some evidences from what's happening in Italy, in my country. So, in Italy, we are removing barriers. Unfortunately, not so much. This is one of the few cases I'm, I'm able to show you. It's, it has been done in the north part of Italy. This is an Alpine Creek. And you see the situation before, after a while, and after recovery, or after restoration. This river has been digged in order to get the gravel for building an highway. And after this, that happened in the 70s, the riverbanks start failing. A lot of uh, you know, a hydrogeological uh, problem has been uh, arising. So, in 2005, the managing authority realized that the maintenance cost of those waves was not able to justify the benefits. And so they decided to remove the waves and basically to restore the river. The driver has been the cost of maintenance. They, uh, they were aware of fish continuity, sediment continuity, whatever, but the driver has been the cost. They could not support anymore the maintenance cost for those waves. And while this is happening in, in Italy, we are also facing such kind of problems. In this moment, in the last few years, we had 673 new waves built along our rivers. 50% more of, of the situation before of 2009. And as those waves have been built because of uh, hydropower production, you can see that the benefit we, get, we got from that action is just an increase of less than 1% of the Italian production of energy. So this is an open issue. Our efforts are towards river fragmentation and we want to solve this problem 
But if with the other end we are building more and more waves, this is not fair. Coming to another good news, we are we have been building a lot of fish passes in our country, <coughs> several, some hundreds, I would say, starting from the beginning of the last century. But there is a but, actually more than one but. A river basin strategy is often missing. We build fish passages, fish passes, without knowing which is the basic scale approach we have to river continuity. Most of the cases, the public administration asks for a fish passes without knowing if that fish pass is actually necessary for that river reach or river segment. Just like, you know, a bureaucratic procedure. You want to build a way? Okay, please make a fish pass. You want to revamp this way? Okay, please make a fish pass. Does it work always? I think that many speakers this morning pointed out that this is not the case. Last but not least, monitoring and management are almost never implemented or even foreseen. So, this is uh, a bad news. Having a lot of fish passes cannot be the solution. Coming to almost the very end of the presentation, we are also dealing with the issue of uh, reservoir management and uh, the, the driver of this uh, care is the fact, the main driver, is the fact that as, as most of the uh, reservoir, the storing capacity is reducing more and more because of the sediment transport coming from upstream. And so this, is, this has a consequence on uh, uh, water supply, on uh, flood management, on uh, energy production. So because of, the, of this, there is a concern. But this concern is going just in a small direction. That is the direction of fine sediment. That's not the whole story. And then, if we look at water abstraction, in Italy we are working mainly with the minimum stream flow concept instead of the ecological flow. To be continued, this is an open issue. Good news, since 2016 we have a new legal provision in Italy and all the river basin management authorities have to prepare a sediment management plan within the next update of their river basin management plans. So by 2021 it is supposed in Italy to have uh, a river basin uh, plan uh, more detailed. But as far as I know, in this moment, just some authorities in the north of Italy are working on this. So this is an open issue and an open challenge. I think that I am going to finish my time. Maybe I am already over. So I am going to shift, uh, to shift those two slides and going to the conclusion. This is uh, some of the projects in which my organization has been involved or is involved now. We have concluded those, the, that life project and then that FP7 project. And if you click at, uh, on that web link, you will get access to a wide library of best practice on the left and the methodologies on the right project. So I invite you to, uh, to browse those websites. At the moment, we are involved as partner into those two projects. I'm a care project with two French partners, ISTEA and the Department of uh, Old Flags, and uh, WECNET with the Tour de Valat Foundation. And in both those projects, we are dealing with the ecosystem services. In the left one, we are trying to answer this question, what ecosystem services came from uh, hydromorphological river restoration. And on the, on the wetland project, how to include ecosystem services into river governance. I invite you to contact us because we, are, we have uh, two or three years to work within this project and we have a lot of dissemination activity to develop. And so there will be room for interaction. So I conclude with this slide. 
that try to summarize some other open issues that in my view are relevant for the topic of river fragmentation. So capitalizing the ecosystem services from river defragmentation is a treat. I mean, defragmentation of river is not the panacea of uh, the, 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 the world, but it's something that could be a treat because the ecosystem services are the, the same pressures that affect rivers. And so we need an integrated assessment when we decide whether to dismantle or not a whale or to restore a river in some other ways. And also, there is a need for inclusive governance because, you know, dealing with different states is a matter of negotiation. And so, we have to consider ecosystem services not just like a catalog of uh, issues, but as a decision support system for the decision maker. And this is still an open challenge. And the second open issue is that ecosystem services for, from river defragmentation are not always relevant. This has been said many times this morning. I would like to add one more time to this uh, uh, concept. There is a need for context analysis when we want to put our hand on a wave. Because river by river, case by case, side by side, there are different conditions. No, you can't have any benefit in removing a whale if, for instance, the quality of the water is not good. Or if you have other kind of pressures that are bigger than the, the fragmentation itself. And we need a stakeholder mapping, because behind each ecosystem service we have a group of interest, a group of people, a group of, of organizations that want to push their stakes. So, as Mr. Heckel said in the opening uh, presentation this morning, maybe governance is the key for being successful in river defragmentation. Next coming event, this one in Spain and this one in Italy, in June. So you are all welcome to visit my country and the country of the colleague from Spain, both dealing with the river continuity. Thank you very much.